here's the view we're going to start off the video with. Uh, YouTube, a blimp in the sky. It's like a, it looks like a State Farms blimp. Anyways, here I am at the park next to my uh, house here taking a break. And I uh, haven't made a YouTube video in a while. I know, it's been a while. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, things have been quite busy since uh, winter break and, you know, going back to school. So we're finished with the first block of medical school now. Now we're in the second half of first year. Uh, the first half finished um, once we hit winter break. And now we're back, and things are heating up a bit. Uh, you know, they get a little bit more intense um, as we go on. So now we have histology, uh, anatomy, full-on, uh, physiology, and I think we're starting genetics soon. So things, um, they're, they're, they're getting, you know, it's like the time's becoming more and more valuable every day because we have to spend so much time in lab now with anatomy. Um, we will have like three anatomy lectures a week, and that's like three dissections you need to be involved in. Uh, and then on top of that, you have your histo and your physio lectures. So it's, and then you have your your cystic, uh, what's it called, um, your clinical foundations course, so, or and like ultrasound. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, I have to go and you know, get dressed up in the white coat and the suit and all that stuff, and um, go and see sterilized patients, patients in practice, um, doing uh, cardio exams, doing GI um, physical exams. So it's becoming a lot more involved, but I have to say in a fun way, because um, when school started, it was it was like fifth year of undergrad. It was a lot of just in the classroom, taking tests, a lot of molecular and biochemistry. Um, it was really just like a continuation of undergrad, which was not all that fun, <laughs> you know. Um, but now it's getting a little more exciting. It's becoming much more clinical oriented. The content seems just ridiculously more clinically relevant. Um, it's just nice to get out of like, you know, look, going in biochemistry and looking at jack stat pathways versus now being in physio and looking at GI, looking at Hirschsprung disease, being in histology, looking at the, you know, the microscopic anatomy of the GI, being at anatomy, looking at the gross anatomy. I mean, it's just a lot of fun now. It's very integrated, it's very oriented, very clinically oriented. So, um, you know, I, I was talking to a uh, third year, actually, excuse me, she was a fourth year. Uh, during one of my ultrasound sessions last week, and she was telling me that as every year progresses, it becomes more and more fun. Um, and even now at the halfway point of first year, it's becoming more fun because, um, uh, how do you say, we're becoming more clinically oriented and less out of that fundamental textbook area. I remember when we first started off, like in the first week, we were looking at the, um, you know, the 20 essential amino acids and their structures, and I was like, oh, not this again. You know, it's like how many times have we got to go through molecular biology until, you know, until you can kind of push up to the higher levels. And so now it's getting to a really fun point. Um, anatomy is in full swing, as they say. Uh, tons of anatomy lectures, but surprisingly, that's been my favorite class. Uh, I made a video earlier called Anatomy is awesome because it is because um, it's a first time experience taking anatomy and it kind of you know introduces you to this new world that not many people are exposed to working with the cadaver you know becoming very intimately known and associating every part of the body um, not every person has that unique opportunity um, but now it's it's amazing how much fun the class is because when you realize where things are I mean we just finished our GI section and I was doing GI uh, physical exam when you're actually palpating you understand what you're palpating for in each quadrant it's an amazing experience you know normally it's like you always see physicians kind of you know if you're a patient you always see them kind of palpating you and you're like you know what are they searching for what's down there and I was I mean I, 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 did, I had no idea what was really um, spread out through my abdominal area but now that I do it's 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 really amazing um, so when people make connections with you know this could be a pe a pen <laughs> excuse me it's, it's been a long day. Uh, you know, so when people say, oh, you know, they're, they're doing like, you know, various exams on you and like, oh, this looks like appendicitis. And I have an idea of why they think it is because you know where it is. You know where the notion of referred pain comes. Um, so you kind of have like a basic understanding of some of the um, concepts that go out in a clinic. So it's a lot of fun. So let me just show you where I am. So here I am back at the park uh, taking a nice exercise break. And look, a little ducky, uh, a little duck in the river. Uh, these things are adorable. Um, so just taking a little break now. That's what I wanted to mention. Sorry, this little side. That's, that's all I want to talk about in this video. The importance of balance, boy almighty. Um, so I told you about that uh, new study schedule I developed when I was. Um, I was it's that video where I'm like driving in the car wearing a green shirt uh, during Thanksgiving break. So I stuck to that study schedule and it has been paying off. Um, I mean, I you know exams have been going well. I'm not all that tired. I'm, I mean, I'm tired just because right now it's a lot of coursework. So I'm kind of trying to adjust my schedule once again uh, now to meet the demands of even having more work than I did uh, the first uh, half of the first year. So I'm kind of trying to tweak my schedule a bit so I'm sleeping a little bit more but balancing I think is key. Uh, a lot, I mean, 
you'll see this sometimes like when I'm in lecture you'll see that you know some people who are working really really hard you'll see them just nodding off in lecture for minutes on end and you know you look at you know you're looking you're looking at them and like oh that person's kind of like doing this and their eyes closed you look at them again five minutes later and they're still like this five minutes closed you know and that's just not good I mean you're, you're already in lecture you might as well try get try to get as much out of it as you can don't be you know sleeping so you got to kind of learn how to modify your schedule so that whenever you are you know in the academic setting in the lecture hall in the library in your uh, you know, office area studying that you are actively studying, and when you're out in this, you know, in this example, a ridiculously gorgeous area, um, you're enjoying it, and you're not tired, and you're not thinking about what I need to study. So that kind of segmentation, I think, is really key. And if you follow that study schedule, or if you kind of develop one of your own that works, or you tweak mine and make it your own, whatever works, just make sure that you can somehow develop your time where when you're in the academic setting, you're full-on focused on studies, and when you're outside of it, and when you want to relax, you can full-on do that. That kind of isolated compartmentalism is really going to enrich each experience. You'll relax really well, you'll be rested, you'll enjoy your time not studying, and when you are studying, you can be really focused and get, you know, get as much out of every hour of studying that you can, so you're not wasting time. I mean, I've noticed that. Sometimes it'll take me a couple hours to go through a single lecture versus some other days it'll take me about less than an hour. So it really depends on, you know, how you're really feeling. If you're not tired and you're motivated and you're focused, you're going to have a really good productive learning session. If you're tired, kind of lethargic, maybe a little bit sleepy, it's not going to be a good use and it's going to take a long time. So really try to set that goal for yourself when you try to set your schedule to have isolated time. That doesn't mean you need to be like spending, you know, enormous time every day not studying. That means study as much as you need to to be comfortable with the material and do well. But in the you know, if you manage your time well, you can kind of focus your studying time so it's not wasted, it's all productive and allow yourself to have time to do other things that kind of give you a little bit of a break. Of course, in that schedule, you know, you take a you know 15-minute break every hour, but I'm talking breaks like, you know, one or two hours long that are really just leaving you alone from school to let you think about other things, let you, let you live your own life for a while, you know, because that kind of happens in medical school at times. You realize that, you know, everyone has this notion that you have your own life, but, you know, medical school, it kind of becomes such a big part of your life that it, to some degree, becomes your life. And, of course, you know, you're working towards medicine to become a physician, so that's going to be your life, but... You know, to some degree, you have to kind of balance who you are as a person with who you are as an academic, so you can kind of keep true to yourself and also be happy. Because uh, there was a concept that that everyone kept bringing up to me when I was an undergrad, and it's the notion of burning out. Um, I, you know, I never really understood the concept of what it mean, what it meant to burn out from school. I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I'll just keep on studying. Uh, but the downfall is that when you are burned out, you don't know you're burned out. You know, so I was quite burned out when I finished school. Um, I took a year off that was well needed, so the last thing you want to do is burn yourself out in medical school. Um, it's, you know, this is going to be really cliche, I apologize in advance. It is a marathon, it's not a sprint. I, I, I told you, cliche, I know. But it's, it's true, I mean, if you think about it, you have so many exams, uh, you have so many things to learn, and it's all very back-to-back. -back. Uh, there's not really much of a time to take a breath if you don't manage your time well. So it is a marathon in that sense, and if you're just sprinting, you know, in the beginning, you're not, you're, you're going to perform not so well in the end, and it can kind of really hit you when it comes to not learning knowledge well. So keep that in mind. Really try to put these isolated blocks of time in. I didn't do a perfect job of that in undergrad. I'm not doing a perfect job of it now. I mean, I don't really know anyone that is. But keep that in mind. If you if it's if you're consciously aware of the fact that you want to try to maintain um, some regularity in life, it'll just make things a lot better. So, I just want to give you guys a quick update. I haven't made a video in a while. Things are good, busy. Let me know if you guys have questions. I've been reading the comments, but nothing really about um, suggestions for videos. Um, just little uh, comments, and I've been responding with uh, private messages. So, you know, the personal questions, not everyone has to read the, your answers to. So, let me know if you have any questions, guys. Comments down below, questions below. Send me a message. Do whatever you like. Um, and I'll check them out and get back to you guys. And I'll leave you with the final view of this really pretty lake. And as always, guys, enjoy your studies.